just kind of like with not a lot of words, just owning the screen. Oh, I'd be amazing. He'd wear a great poncho. He would wear a great poncho. And Leguizamo, directed by Clint Eastwood? Yes, please. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm all about that. Oh, man. Keep that score. It's a great movie. Yep, so that's my that's my holy grail Carl Urban remake would be. All right, so my last one is, this is really weird, and people would riot because it's unnecessary. But I want to see him in a remake of The Shining. I don't know why they would make it. Because the, you know, the 80s, well, Stephen King made his TV miniseries because he didn't like The Shining. He said it's a very fancy, good looking thing, but there's no anything to it because Jack's already crazy. But I want a role that could push. I want Denny Villanelle, the guy who did Blade Runner 49 and Prisoners, to make Carl Urban into, you know, that character. Wow. And do a Shining remake all on stages because Villanelle did, uh, Villeneuve, not Villanelle, she's from Killing Eve. Villeneuve. Did you know, he went to um, what Budapest to shoot Blade Runner twenty nine on all their sound stages? So build massive stages. Carl Urban, the writer, very weird, but I, I like it. No, I think I think that is weird. I don't think I don't think people would riot because I think again, The Shining is not a movie that ages well. I want to say I understand it's like this classic movie and has all it's like so iconic and whatnot, and like all kinds of stuff happens in it. But again. I don't, I feel like, you know, Nicholson was crazy from the, the get-go. And it was, I, just, I don't love that movie like people love that movie. Yeah, I mean, Shelley Winters is just screaming the whole time. And, you know, definitely some of the characters are definitely off. Uh, but I do think, I guess for me, I showed it to my production design class just for the production design. Yeah. If that makes sense. But, I mean, the blood, all that kind of stuff, it doesn't really make too much sense. It's, I think it's definitely style over substance. Yeah, but I th- would like to see some substance with that style. What do you think? And when I think substance, I think Carl Urban. Yep. <laughs> so we we got to break this down to five. Can we can we keep multiplicity? Yeah, yeah I'm down with keeping multiplicity. Because that would just be so weird, wouldn't it? It would be, and it's like not like a classic movie that needs a remake. So, like, I'm pretty sure people under the age of twenty wouldn't even know that it's a remake. It would just be a new movie. Yeah, exactly. And then what do you think about Tangle and Cash with What do you think about Tangle and Cash with Oliphant? No, that has to go in because it was we both thought of it, so it's a guarantee it's a, it's a golden lock in. All right. With Ollie with Oliphant. So we need three I more had, pictures. I had uh just talking about multiplicity. I had uh, a bunch of youth kids at my house some Fridays to go to watch watch some movies. We should watch Jumanji. And I was like, which one? Like the new one or the old one? And all the kids were like, What do you mean the old one? Oh, they had no idea they were did they like the old one? Um, we watched the new one. Oh, I didn't want to, didn't want to risk it. Got it. Because that one gets pretty bleak. It does. Can we can we keep high noon? Yeah, but let's do it in space. <laughs> you know, I almost I, said lockout. Yeah, but like high noon on a space station. Oh my gosh! So we have multiplicity, tango, and cash. High noon on a spaceship. You know I like what? that. I think they did high noon on a spaceship. They did lockout. They did. They did escape from New York in space with lockout. Yeah. No. I, my mind tells me Sean Connery. It, wait. In a high noon on a spaceship? We'll just remake that one. Give me two seconds here. All right. So now what we have left are the Frighteners, the Treasure of Sierra Madre, the Shining, Legion, Face Off, and Crocodile Dundee. And we have Multiplicity, Tango and Cash with Timothy Oliphant, and High Noon in Space. So now we just need to, to break these down. I mean. I guess I could lose. I like the idea. I love Treasure of Sierra Madre. I'm gonna lose The Shining. Okay. Because I think people would just they wouldn't know what to do. I I think a lot of a lot of people would be annoyed, and I don't want Carl Urban to be attacked for remaking The Shining. No. So these three movies that we have: Multiplicity, Tango in Space, and High Noon. High Noon in Space and Tango in Cash. No one's gonna be angry at him for remaking it. Does that make sense? Yes. So here it is. Outland is a 1981 British science fiction thriller film written and directed by Peter Haynes, Sean Connery, Peter Boyle, and set on Jupiter's moon. is described, described as a space western as in high noon. Oh, brother. Well, we, we can remake that. We'll make, we'll remake Outland. Make, remake it better. Oh, we should have put him in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen in the Connery role. Can you imagine Urban as James Bond? Maybe back in the day, not now. No, I'm talking like 30-year-old Carl Urban. Yeah, for sure. He could have done it. 
All right. So what do we think? We got to take we got to take Frighteners, Treasure, Legion, Face Off, Crocodile Dundee. Are, what's the what's the deal with? Are we? What are our thoughts on Fistful of Dollars? Oh yeah, Fistful of Dollars. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I'm down for that. Let's do it. Clint, Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Remaking his own movie. Yeah. Because he wouldn't care, and this would be a big prestige film. Because most of the time, when you think about Sully, American Sniper, he would get awards talk. Yeah. And Leguizamo's getting a movie, so you have to do that. So I love Clint Eastwood more than most people love actors, but I think this would be the perfect way to put a cap on the end of his career. I like it. Fist little dollars, and he walks away. Fist, so is this in space, too? No, this is a direct remake. He's going to go to the same little Italian town. Oh. Like, it's going to be like a, a coming-of-age moment for him. Are they going to be spaghetti robots? No robots. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Swan song. All right, so what's the last... I, I, what do you want? Frighteners? Treasure Sierra Mod? Let's get rid of Legion. Yeah, I mean, we... I, I, I like the Frighteners. I like the Frighteners a lot. I like... I think that I like it. Face Off or Frighteners. What do you think? Yeah, so I think Face Off would be a lot of fun. Yeah, and it would be Keanu. You can't turn down a Keanu role. No, so why don't we do this? We'll say Face Off, and if the first three movies make money, we'll add the sixth movie in the deal for um, the Frighteners. Yeah, we'll add a rider. <laughs> oh, and we'll sneak it into the contract. Right, so he thinks he's done. He's going to go make his indie art house film. And we say, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you owe us the Frighteners, sir. We had a great, you know, you didn't want to make these last two, even though he signed the contract, so you got to make another one. You looked at us and said, high noon in space? <laughs> yes, sir, high noon in space. So in the contract, if he complains too much, he has to make another one. That's right. And he complained too much. So we're doing he multiplicity, Tango and Cash with Timothy Oliphant, high noon in space, fistful of dollars, and face off. So we'd have to kick it off with fistful of dollars first. That's that's the that's the the, the kickoff, right? That's the that's the one that gets him in. Yeah, so that would make him very happy, right? He gets to be part of Clint's legacy. And then we're gonna put him in multiplicity, which he might hate. So then we'll follow that up with hanging out with Timothy Oliphant in Tango and Cash, right? Then we'll be like, hey man, we'll do high noon in space because you just hung out with Timothy Oliphant. And you get to finish it with Keanu Reeves in the Face Off remake. And we're shooting to a year. To a year. Because, I mean, you could knock each of these movies out in four months. I'd say, I'd say Fistful of Dollars is one year. Just one a year. Get that one right. And then the other ones we can knock out pretty quick. Yeah. But the problem is, Clint Eastwood only does one or two takes in his movies now. Oh, that's right. So he can be quick. One take Eastwood. Yeah. So I think we should start with him. Because he could just say, listen, man, you know, we're, we're, and then so basically he works four months, has two months off, works four months, have two months off. So we could knock this out quick. We got, we got some high noon in space. High noon in space. All right. Well, this was fun, dude. Thanks for uh, suggesting. I mean, we tackled Dread, we tackled Judge Dread, and we put this list together. It was tough. How do you think we did with two movies? No, I think, I think we juggled them fairly well. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think that that's, you know, it, it was a different format, but I think that it was one I would, I would visit again. I would, I would definitely do Red Dawn, um, Remake or Mistake with you. All right, yeah, let's do it. Remake or Mistake. And then we still got, uh, what else? What do we have next? I think, is it, is it not Sharks in Sweden next? Oh, yeah, it is. You and, oh, so we have to record that. Yep, Sharks in Sweden. Shark Lake and Sharks in Sweden, correct? We got, all right, we got to talk about this. So, hey, this was fun. So we're going to go start planning this, but for me, Mark Hoffmeyer, for Adam Hodgins, this is Movies, Films, and Flicks. We'll see you next week. Oh, yeah, we got to discuss that.